idea for the index came from the Feed the Future initiative. It was looking for a way of monitoring the impact of its interventions on inclusive agricultural growth, meaning growth which benefited the poor and included women. Feed the Future is President Obama's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative. It's focused on dealing with the root causes of poverty and hunger. The Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index is the first time we've developed a tool in USAID or in any donor to really measure in a precise way whether women are empowered in the activities that they're doing in agriculture and whether the activities that we're implementing are having the intended effect of empowering women and improving gender equity. An empowered woman in agriculture would be a woman who could take decisions about what to produce, who had ownership, whether by herself or with her husband, of land, animals, implements, who was able to borrow money so that she could undertake improvements, um, who was a leader in her community, and quite importantly, who had enough time that she could take care of herself and not be worn down so she could take care of herself and her family better. The Women's Empowerment and Agriculture Index is a measure which combines two sub-indices one looking at the five domains of women's empowerment and the other looking at the gender parity between the woman and the man in the same household. The five domains of women's empowerment in agriculture are production, resources, income, leadership, and time. Um, in measuring empowerment in agriculture for a couple of reasons. First of all, we are not proxying empowerment as so often happens by looking at women's income or women's educational levels, but rather at their um, participation in the five domains. And the second reason is that it is innovative, is we are able to compare the same woman and the same man in the household using exactly the same five domains and ten indicators. And so we can see how empowered she is compared to usually her spouse or the other primary male in her household. And that has also never been done before. Um, again, thinking about what the evidence shows us, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, the FAO, has done some really significant groundbreaking studies that have changed our thinking around this. And what they've looked at and revealed is that if you equalize access to land, credit, essential services in agriculture between men and women, you can increase pr agricultural productivity between 20 and 30 percent. In a world where we're really focused on the critical need to deal with feeding the hungry, um, that, that's a, a stunning statistic and really forces us to focus on women. to build this index means gathering new data. It's a very new index and so existing data that, that was around would not be applicable. So what we did was to choose three countries where we were going to do the pilot, three countries where you have very different socioeconomic and cultural contexts. And so these were Bangladesh, Guatemala, and Uganda. You can look at where the gaps are. It's really very helpful for policy. So to give an example in Bangladesh, um, the indicators which contribute a lot to women's disempowerment are relate to uh, productive resources and to control over income. Women are very disempowered in control over income, but men are not. And so if you were simply to reduce women's deprivations in that particular index, then you would both empower women and improve gender parity. In Guatemala, it is a very interesting case in which the 
achievements of women relative to men um, are worse in all of the indicators uh, across the board. And so focusing on uh, improving gender parity in that context is very important. In Uganda, you need a lot more focus on time use. The results are on a small scale. We've piloted it and now we're, we're rolling it out to all of our 20 focus countries. For us, it's predominantly a monitoring and evaluation tool. So we're looking at getting the information that's generated by the index and using it to think about whether our programs are having the intended effect. But we really want others to apply it. We see the tool as a public good. <laughs> Other institutions and actors can also use the Women's Empowerment and Agriculture Index. The index, the methodology that the index is based on is very flexible. We want anyone and everyone to take this tool and apply it so they can use it to understand whether their programs are having the impact that they desire but also just to generate broader knowledge and learning around what women's empowerment really means in the agricultural sector.